Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I'm back with a new layout for Hip Kit Club and I'm using the 2020 December kits. And I wanted to try to use some of the pattern papers from the kits. All of these are exclusive to Hip Kits, so you can only get them there in the kits this month. And I really liked these different colors uh, and patterns together. And so I thought I would just go ahead and slice up a couple of strips. And I also like some of the branding strips on some of these papers. So I wanted to incorporate some of the pinks, the, the golden yellow color there on that pattern paper, some of the light blues and dark blues, and just kind of create a vertical strip design and then kind of go from there and this is going to help determine my color scheme and where I'm going to put my photos and all of that. Now I do fussy cut some of these florals out but I don't wind up using them. Um, it's just you know sometimes you have an idea in your head and then things change and um, I like all of those papers together and that's where I'm going to start. Now I also wanted to incorporate the exclusive stamp set into my layout again this month and I'm going to use the solid heart and I'm going to do some messy stamping here using the shimmers that we get in the color kit and I'm just going to paint each color right onto the stamp and then flip it over and stamp it down onto a bit of scrap white cardstock and this is textured cardstock I've already used the other half for who knows what but I'm going to use all three colors here to make some messy stamped hearts and the first color that I'm using is the Christmas cheer that's the golden yellow color that we get in the color kit and this is really fun to do because it first of all it works really well and you can stamp each time a couple of times to get you know at least three hearts with each application of the color and of course each time the color is going to get a little bit lighter and I really love that because, you know, none of the hearts are perfect. They look kind of messy and watercolor-ish, which I like. So each time you stamp it, it gets a little bit lighter. And I love the third stamping because you get some white in there and you get some of the edges that are crisp, but then some of the edges that are left off because of the nature of just wherever the paint is on the stamp love that. Um, this pink color that I'm using is an Inklings called Naughty or Nice and it's kind of a pinkish coral type of color with hints of red. It's not super red but it's it's just the perfect coral. Yeah I'm not going to keep trying to describe it because I'm just going to name all these names. You can see what color it is right there. It matches the pinks in that striped paper really well. Um, the blue color is called Oaky Bear Blue. So that's all three colors and I've got them all stamped here and then I'm just going to cut these out. I don't wind up using all of these but I just wanted to play around and get different colors with each of the shimmers. Like I said you get a dark one, you get a light one depending on how many times you stamp it. But you can see how shimmery they are. Of course all three of these colors are shimmery. Very very beautiful. And all of these colors are in these papers that I'm going to use. So somehow, some way, I'm going to incorporate them onto my page. Now I wanted to darken up the blue a little bit since I've got that dark blue and white polka dot paper. I wanted to make the blue hearts even darker. So I pulled out a spray that we got a long time ago. It's a shimmers called Deep Blue Sea. And I'm just going to kind of use the nozzle to dab a little bit of that color onto these hearts just to darken them up just a little bit and they don't wind up being as dark as that dark blue paper but I did want them a little bit darker. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just using my finger to kind of smudge the color around and then I'm going to go from there. So you can still see that the hearts are definitely not as dark as this paper. So what I thought I would do was maybe lighten up the paper a little bit. So I'm going to just get messy here and smudge some white gesso over it. And I like to do this anyway a lot of times on paper just to give it a weathered and distressed look. Um, I, I want these papers to not be so crisp. I love to add gesso to them. I like to add white splatters or white paint. And um, just to give it a little bit of something 
so it's not such a flat and crisp color. Um, I'm going back over this with a little bit of the Oaky Bear Blue just to kind of tone down a little bit of the white on the uh, dots and to kind of just give some different variations on this paper. Um, in the end, you know, you can't really even tell that I did this. And I sometimes that happens a lot where I'll try something to see if it makes a difference. And in the end, it really doesn't. But that's just part of, you know, playing around with everything and and seeing how it might work. You never know until you try it. But it did tone down the white dots some. So I'm still glad that I did that. And I'm going to put all the paper strips kind of back together and see if something strikes me as what I might want to do next. Now I do know that I'm going to overlap all of these paper strips and I want the edges to be a little bit torn and rugged. So I'm going to run each one through my edge distressor there so the edges are a little messy. And I like how all of the strips are straight edges except the blue one is the torn edge. I like having things straight but I also like having some elements that are crooked or mismatched. And I'm going to use textured white cardstock from the cardstock kit as the background and then go ahead and glue these paper strips down. And I haven't done anything to this white cardstock yet. I do want these to be straight so I'm going to pull out my T-square ruler there to make sure that my paper strips are straight because I, yeah, I, th I eyeball things and I think it looks straight and it, no, it's not. Okay, so I'm going to glue these down. The edge that I distressed is going to be the edge on top. And yeah, I'm still going to wind up gluing this last paper crooked and I don't realize it until later on. So I let it dry and then I did some machine stitching with dark blue thread in a couple spots and I want to do it more but I wanted to leave that big chunk open in case I wanted to tuck some things under it so I just did a little bit of stitching up to this point and I'm going to go ahead and add gesso to the white card stock that is still showing because that is where I'm going to do more mixed media so I'm going to use some Art Basics Finnebear clear gesso on both sides of the paper strips because I'm not sure if I'm going to add any more of the shimmers to both sides or just one side but I'm gonna go ahead and prep it anyway just in case um, and the gesso just acts as a barrier between the paper and the paint so it doesn't just soak right through it allows you to move the paint around a little bit so I took a break and this is when I came back and realized that this striped paper was crooked so I cut another strip of it and kind of overlapped it and restitched it to make it look straight. You, you probably didn't even notice that it was crooked, but I noticed it. So anyway, I fixed it. Here are my photos. These are some really cute, fun couch selfies of me and my two girls. And I printed them in black and white because I just could not really find any color photos that were complemented by all the colors in these papers. And so whenever that happens, I just go with a black and white photo to kind of take out that issue because everything matches with black and white. So here's what I was talking about earlier. I like to add a little bit of white gesso sometimes to pattern papers just to kind of add a little bit of distressing and a little bit of uh, a faded and hazy look. I'm not trying to cover up any of the colors or anything but it just softens things up and gives it a little bit of a, a frosted effect and I like how that's looking. And I'm gonna stick with this vertical design. And I thought I would go with the pink color for the mixed media on the left side. And I'm gonna go back to the Naughty or Nice, same color that I used earlier to stamp the hearts. And I did get asked a couple of weeks ago what was in that blue bottle, and that's just my water bottle. It's just plain water, and that's what I use to spray to kind of add water to the paint to kind of help it dilute it and help it run and spread and I like that it kind of allows lights and darks to happen because you saw how it looked when I just took the brush and painted it right onto the background it's very bold color and I wanted it to kind of lighten up a little bit and kind of create this nice big area that you're going to be able to see behind the left side of the two photos when I stack them back on top and um, yeah so that's the color that I thought I would start with and you can see here how pretty it is you can make it as light or as bold as you want 
but you definitely want to be aware that whenever you add a lot of water like I just did to this shimmery paint uh, the fact that you're diluting it it does affect the end shimmer factor a little bit so it's still shimmery you can see here but it's not nearly as shimmery as if I would have just left it straight alone but I did want it to be softer so it just depends on the look you're going for so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to come back and start to work on the photos. So I'm going to go ahead and layer some white tissue paper behind there because I'm pretty sure that's the only thing I'm going to layer behind there. I'm, I'm not going to bring in any more patterned papers or anything to build up a lot of layering behind the photos since I've got so many papers already on the background and lots of colors going on. So I want to kind of just let the photos kind of uh, do their own thing. And I'm going to try to start to play around with those hearts and see what I might want to put where. And I've got a lot of other embellishments that I'm going to play with as well. So I'm going to set the hearts aside and I'm going to come back in with the naughty or nice. And now that I know where the photos are going to go, I'm going to start to add in some dark. So I'm going to very carefully just take the paint and the brush and paint in intentional places this time where I know that I want more of the the bolder color to show and I want it to kind of appear like it's a darker shadow around the photos the top and the bottom and the edges so I'm going to come back in with the brush and the paint and just basically add another layer of that exactly where I want it and you can see what I was saying earlier how you can control the darkness or the lightness of these colors and I love that you can see how shimmery it is which is beautiful so I pulled out more embellishments from the kits this month I've got a lot of the chipboard pieces here um, some acetate pieces that you can see through like that yellow circle and I, I don't want to be able to see the patterns behind it because it's going to change the color of the circle so I'm going to quickly glue it to some white cardstock and then cut that out and I really don't know what I'm going to use. I just pulled out everything that matched and I pulled out anything that I thought I could remotely use. And I take some time to just play around with it all. I'm not sure if I'm going to do mixed media on the right side behind the blue paper. I'm not sure where I want to put all those hearts. Um, I do want to use a couple of these clear acetate pieces from that celebrate 2021 clear sticker sheet right there i love those stickers i love that they're clear and that they're nice and thick um, i, I want to try to use a couple of those as layering pieces the little parts that look like fireworks so i took a break i'm going to come back i pulled out some more things to use i think i want to use a couple of these dark blue circles it's just a matter of finding the right place for these things um because I still want to be able to see the mixed media on the left. I mean, some of it is going to be hidden because obviously I start to add things to it. It's going to be covered up. But yeah, I know I want to use that fun piece as part of my title, but I'm not sure what else I'm going to use for that. I like this little part that says my happy place or our happy place but the arrow i couldn't figure out where to put it so the arrow was pointing toward the photos so i just cut the arrow off um, i thought about using some of these star pieces and they're cute and they match but this just i wasn't feeling the vibe of stars i don't know i i try them because look at this little puffy sticker sheet full of stars those are i think my favorite thing in the kits this month but i don't know i just kept adding them and i thought eh, I'm not really feeling stars i left them there for a while to see if they grew on me but i wind up moving those um, i do pop the photos up with a little bit of adhesive foam take a break come back then i decide okay before i start gluing things down if i'm going to add my white splatters I better do it now because you know I'm addicted now to white splatters I feel like I do this on every layout lately I don't know what my problem is I just love doing it um, and all that is is white acrylic paint with a little bit of water added to it to help it splatter and I like to do little splatters I like to do big splatters if you want to do a big splatter just get a bunch of it on your bristles and hold it up high and then squeeze down on the bristles using your fingers and then you'll get a nice big blob you just got to get your fingers dirty. You got to be willing to touch the bristles. That's the only thing, which you know me, I don't care. 
my hands, they have white gesso on them all the time, so it's all good. But yeah, it's just white acrylic paint. I've had the same bottle, I think, that I got from Walmart a long, long time ago. I mainly just use it for splatters, <laughs> so I keep it close by, but I like how that looks. It just kind of adds to the messy look on the background. It kind of lightens things up a little bit. And then I decided that I wanted to keep going with the splatters, and so I pulled out the Christmas cheer that I used earlier when I was stamping the hearts. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna stamp. Now this is a little bit thicker, so I had to get a lot of it on the brush to get it to splatter because um, the other two colors are the inklings, whereas this one is an actual Shimmers original. And so when you open it up, it's already blended together you just have to mix it with your brush and there's a lot of ground up glittery sparkles in there and so you really have to flick the brush if you're going to splatter it because it's pretty thick but it's amazing and it's extremely shimmery when it's dry so i love how when that when that color dries you get a nice golden effect i love that so here's what i've got so far i really love this I love how that looks. I love just, it looks weathered and it looks textured and I like all the white on it. So yeah, we're going to go back and try to rebuild everything. Before I add anything to start gluing though, I'm going to add in my thread. I've got the dark blue color that I'm going to add to the left because I don't have anything blue on that side of the page. And so I want to echo that dark blue on the right over on the left and a good way to do that is thread plus it just adds some fun texture and it adds to the whole messy effect I'm gonna go with our happy place up above the photo and that's it was an arrow like I said earlier I just cut the arrow part off and then I'm trying to mix the colors up so I want some yellow pieces all over the page I want some pink pieces all over the page and just trying to kind of mix things up. I cut that frame in half and at first I kind of tucked it in all crooked but I decide to kind of make it a little more even so I'm gonna move these up so it looks like it's one big thing underneath the photos there. I'm gonna use that family circle chipboard piece and now that I got that down things are starting to flow. I'm like okay I'm liking how this is looking. I'm liking these hearts. I'm liking these circles start to tuck things in and I know that everything is going to pretty much stay where it is. Um, I do add some dark blue. I do add the dark blue circle that says vibes up at the top. I'm actually going to pull another one later to put down at the bottom. Add in some of those clear um, fireworks stickers. And then I knew that I wanted to do something over to the right because it's just kind of open and plain. I decided to not do mixed media over there, but I do add some thread and that is a golden yellow color. And I'm going to layer it kind of underneath where the hearts are kind of clustered there underneath the blue heart. And then I did add that dark blue circle at the bottom that says party and it kind of matches the one up top that says vibes. Looks black, but they're navy blue. And then I'm going to start to glue, 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 glue things down carefully a little bit at a time here because I don't want to move things. I'll never remember where everything went. So we're just going to start gluing. And I'm using Scotch Tacky Glue inside the bottle there. Um, my favorite glue ever. It works great. Um, and I did want to kind of add a little bit of weathering or hazy shading, whatever you want to call it, to these dark blue circles so white gesso to the rescue to do that i think that is my favorite thing to use on my layouts is gesso it has so many different uses besides just prepping your paper i use it on <laughs> so many things but it just you know lightens things up gives it a little bit of a hazy effect a little bit of a, a cloudy look and then we're gonna glue 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 Sometimes the gluing part is my favorite part because it means the hard part is over. The deciding and the messy part, which are also fun parts to do, but 
when you start gluing, you know you're on the home stretch. <laughs> Everything is done. And then it comes down to the, the tiny little effects at the end. Like, okay, now what am I going to do? Um, I'm going to add on to my title. So now I've got fun party, which this clearly wasn't a party, but it was a couch party. So I'm going to add on the couch using these little dark blue puffy alphas. I love these. I think I've used these on all my layouts. There's another set that's the, the pink color, but I went with the blue. And this is what I've got so far. So fun party on the couch. Yep, that's the title. It's a it's a title I've never used before, so we're going with it. And I like how it's different fonts and different things kind of mixed together. Um, I'm going to add in a couple of these puffy phrase stickers in a couple spots. And I really love these because there's some really good phrases on there that fit fit my photos and fit my layouts and uh, things. Um, that one says something about chaos, embrace the chaos, and uh, I love that because, yeah, I think I used part of that same phrase on my layout last week from a pocket life card. That one on the right says real life, which is definitely true. And, you know, these photos are not perfect photos. I, I talked about this on my layout last week. These are just photos on my phone. You know, there's a, a dim lamp in our living room that's right beside us, so the lighting wasn't that great. So if you look up close, these photos are not clear. Um, but they were still some of my favorite photos. And I always, you know, want to embrace that that moment, no matter how terrible the photo is. Just do your best to edit it to where you like it, um, because it's worth documenting. If it was, if it was that special of a moment, who cares if the photo wasn't perfect? You know, you still you still want to remember it. Um, because in the first photo, my youngest daughter's creeping up behind me and she's trying to like grab my chin. And then I love the look on her face in the second one. She's creeping up behind me and. If you know her, then that smile is her, I'm up to something smile. Yeah, it's, it's, it was a fun moment. Um, I just added some splatters there with the naughty or nice, and then we're almost done. I'm going to add in the journaling with um, my T-square ruler and some pencils, and then some pencils, a pencil, and then my black fine tip Sharpie, and that is it. That's the final layout. Hopefully the colors look okay in this final image. I am having to learn a new way to edit my photos because my editing software changed and it's terrible. So I am learning Photoshop and it's very overwhelming. So hopefully you can see all the colors here. Yeah, Photoshop is scary. <laughs> I've tried to put off learning it, but I'm forced to, to learn that now. And it's awesome, but it's there's a lot. It's a lot. Um, anyway, here are all the close-ups. Lots of texture, lots of dimension. Uh, yeah, it was fun to, you know, use these pattern papers and go from there. And, uh, of course, you know, I love me some shimmers, so that was fun to use those as well. Um, make sure you check out the January kits if you haven't seen those yet. Hopefully those will be shipping in the next week or so. Uh, they're awesome. Can't wait to get those. And let me know if you have any other questions. I will see you in my next video. I hope you have a great week, and thank you for watching.